This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Do you remember back in the day, um, I don't know, before 1984, I think there used to be the phone company, Ma Bell, right? And the phone company owned like the whole system, like even the phones in your house. You could get like those two choices. I had a princess phone myself. It was red though, very manly color. Anyway, um, and, and then they had that big lawsuit and they broke it up and then there were a bunch of baby bells. Remember those? New York Telephone, I probably was one of them. And slowly over time, they bought and they sold each other and they broke up and they offered internet service and, uh, and you know, uh, long distance companies. Remember when long distance was like a big deal? Like I remember my aunt would call from Colorado, it's long distance. And I said, run to the phone. No one pays any attention to that anymore. But, you know, all these phone companies, they merged and now there's like, like two phone companies. I don't know. It's like a bunch of little ones, but there's basically just like a couple of really big phone companies. We're kind of right back to where we started, right? And there's this impulse in us to, to control things and centralize things and to, and to sort of get out of diversity. We don't really like that so much sometimes. So we tend to merge towards consolidation. It's just sort of some innate human impulse to do so. And the same kind of thing is happening in Jesus's day with temple worship, right? That if we read in like the book of Kings or in, in Samuel, we will learn that, that they used to do sacrifices all over. They had sacrificial sites and in several places all across the land of Israel. We read about David and he's always making sacrifices at some shrine here, some temple there. But by Jesus's day, the temple is the only game in town. Ma temple, I guess. And they owned everything, the whole system. There was no way around it. You had to buy your sacrificial animals from them. You couldn't bring your own sheep. You had to use their sheep because their sheep were, you know, better, purer, something. They own the whole system. And of course, the impulse to this is in some ways good, right? They wanted to make sure the sacrifices were done right. At the same time, there are always unscrupulous people in every system who try to take advantage of those who are forced into that system. And the same thing happens in Jesus' day. That's what the story of the widow's might is all about. It's not about giving everything you have to church. It's about how unscrupulous people take away and take advantage of those whose faith is pure. But that's not what this is about. What this is about is about decentralization. And this question that the scribe asked Jesus in this gospel. What's, what's the most important thing we can do as God's people? And Jesus gives this answer. And if you were paying attention, this will look really familiar because we just heard it as the psalm. Uh, or sorry, it's the first reading, right? From Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
It's the only sentence in Hebrew I know. Shema Yisrael Eloheinu Elohecha. I used to know the whole thing. And this prayer, right, from Deuteronomy is known as the Shema from that first word. Shema Yisrael. Hear, O Israel. The word hear is the word Shema. And this is the daily prayer that all faithful Jewish people recite to this day. And it was certainly the case that they recited it in Jesus' day as well. That they were supposed to start their day with this prayer, this acknowledgement of their place in God's creation. And it gives this message of faithfulness in one's daily life. That, that faith isn't something that happens in that place over there once in a while. That it's something that unfolds daily in our lives. And it's something that we have to kind of intentionally do. It doesn't just sort of wash over us. We have to make an effort. We have to do some things to remember our God. We need to remember our God with intention. We need to, to pass it on. We need to mark our lives. Right? Have you ever seen those Jewish people with like the little tiny boxes tied to their heads? They have like little scrolls inside. It comes from this where it says, you shall put it on your head. What does it say? Anyway, it's in there somewhere. And so there's this idea that I don't think we need to necessarily put little leather boxes, although I don't want to knock anybody else's piety. But I think what's important here is that in some way, God's word needs to be imprinted upon our lives and upon ourselves. And that, that worship doesn't belong to the temple or to the church. It's a place we gather to do worship. But worship is yours to do. And when we're not here doing it, God still expects us to live out our worshipful lives and everything else that we do. And all the ways that we, we interact with others, we need to ask ourselves, how is God present here? And, and this is a really interesting thing. Ask yourselves, do other people know from the way I act and move through the world that I'm guided by something other than just my own self-interest? Am I Christian in my affect and in, in the way that other people see me? Would they know that I'm a follower of the Prince of Peace, the great redeemer and savior of humankind? And, and let's be honest, there are some people who are pretty loud about talking about how being they are followers of Jesus, who by the example of their life might suggest that it's not really true. We've all met those people. And yet still Jesus wants to remind us to continue to push against that impulse to consolidate and give away our faith lives to experts or to people who think or say they have more insight or, or a better understanding or, or a clear channel of communication to God. That our Christian faith is something that is owned not by the church, but by all of us. And that the church at its very best, and I think we do a pretty good job here, but I think the church at its very best is the expression of our individual lives of faith brought together. And the truth is that, that without you, without your time and your prayers and your, uh, your generous gifts, without the loving acts that you do for one another and out in the world, there is no church. I mean, we might have like a club or something, but we wouldn't have a church. And what separates us from all of the other good and worthy institutions that we might belong to, you know, is this idea that it's motivated by this desire to live fully into God's desires for us. To set aside our own understanding and impulses and to substitute them for God's. And, and in a weird way, when we, we give that up, right, when we sacrifice that, 
we become, this is really funny, more truly ourselves. We become the people that we, that we were meant to be. And I think when we're able to do that and we sense that and we, when we sacrifice that sense of autonomy, instead of subservience, what we find is freedom. Freedom to be the people we really want to be. Generous people, kind people, open-hearted people. I think, I think that's what most of us want. And there's all sorts of things that get in the way of us doing that. But when we're freed to be those people, to live as though God's commands were written on our hearts, then we are truly, truly followers of Christ. Amen.